Hey, welcome to the VHF UHF channel and um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the difference between two types of receivers that you can get to receive uh, high frequency signals in the VHF UHF range. Uh, usually you'll have one scanner that's called actually a receiver that will be called a scanner like this one here on the right and you'll have a type of receiver called a communications receiver which is on the left. What's the difference between a communications receiver and a scanner? Uh, for one thing the frequency coverage of a communications receiver is usually much much bigger than a scanner. An example this Pro 92 is from 30, 29 megahertz up to 900 and something like 960 megahertz or something like that. But it's not continuous. It's divided into bands, 30 to 54, 108 to 174, uh, and so on, you know, 4, 410, 400 to uh, 512, uh, 800, something to 868 and so on. It's divided into different bands so you can tune for example 500 megahertz, uh, 560 megahertz, 700 megahertz. It's not part of the program of the receiver for reception. So that <coughs> sorry usually is pretty much what a scanner is. It's something that is uh, made for specific bands but is not, does not cover the full range of the frequency. This one, being a communications receiver, receives a lot of frequencies. It does not, I'm in Canada, so it doesn't have any lockouts of frequency. This receiver starts at way, way down 150 kilohertz below the AM band and goes way up to 3.3 gigahertz in the very very high UHF spectrum. It's continuous. I can tune any frequency from 150 kilohertz all the way up to 3.3 gigahertz. Just choose a frequency, punch it in. I want to receive a, a signal on 1693.505 uh, megahertz and that's it. It's, it's, it's there. So, um, you know, I, I just punch it in and that's where I'll listen to this frequency. It is one of the difference, the major difference between a communications receiver and a scanner. Second difference between a communications receiver and a scanner usually is on the step size. Most scanners have fixed step sizes, meaning that they will uh, scan 5 kilohertz apart on VHF, certain part of VHF, 12.5 kilohertz apart spacing on some other frequencies. They typically follow the spacing for uh, the type of frequency it's listening to because in the frequency range when there's a radio band, for example the 450 megahertz commercial band, the band was decided that the signals would be at 12.5 kilohertz spacing. So the scanner here has that pre-programmed. In this case, I think I cannot change it. On most scanners, you cannot change it. Some scanners will let you play a little bit with it. Uh, some very, very recent modern scanners might let you play with this, uh, the scanning, um, the tuning, but most of the time when you scan between frequencies, you'll notice that it, it reverts back to its pre-programmed steps. A communications receiver is a programmable receiver for the steps. You program whatever steps you want. So for example, in here I'll tune and I'll just, at the bottom here you see the steps, I'll just choose the steps that I want to use while I'm tuning around for signals. So it's much more flexible in the way that it operates than a scanner. The other uh, differences is that most scanners will have FM AM only and some like this one you can change from AM or FM on some bands 
a lot of the scanners out there you cannot change it drops on AM only when it's on the airband and it goes back to FM on everywhere else a communications receiver usually has many modes it has AM FM this one receives upper lower sideband CW signals which is Morse code uh, wide FM so it is once again much more flexible than a scanner radio the uh, a lot of people will say well okay if it's if a communications receiver is so fantastic why don't we buy that instead of a scanner well one thing that they um, will do better in scanning most of the time um, one of the major um, advantages of scanning is that scanners usually will have features like this one has trunking trunking is a digital mode of operating a repeater so that signals can um, you know go into a repeater and be followed by a control channel and um, what happens is some scanners like this one will have the uh, ability to read the control channel IDs and know what frequency to jump to to get the communications because it changes all the time in frequency um, a, com a communications receiver cannot do that it's not made for that purpose uh, so that's one thing that's one difference maybe someday someone will come up with a communications receiver that is trunk who knows but it's probably going to be a very expensive receiver although they are already very expensive <clears throat> so um, the um, other part of most scanners is that they tend even if they are complex receivers I would say that most scanners are easier to operate than communications receivers um, it's easier to understand how to operate and scan with the uh, Pro 92 for example on many many respects and program frequencies than it is in the Pro and this uh, ICOM ICR20 which is very very complicated and basically has I would say not a, a not very good manual basically so uh, these are differences between both receivers uh, it depends on what you want to hear why should I get myself a communications receiver uh, in my case I want one because I'm listening to signals that most people aren't I can listen to satellites with this one and listen to uh, uh, amateur radios and upper sidemen on these satellites uh, you will not be able to do that on a scanner but once again that's a very specialized type of listening a communications receiver is for the people that actually are past just scanning for signals uh, in the regular frequency ranges of scanners it's for people that know that there's a world out there of other types of signals that a scanner will not receive and that's why a communications receiver is interesting it lets you listen to other things that a lot of scanners won't let you in but it's not for everyone also not everyone is interested in uh, going that far I am a radio maniac so I want to listen to almost everything that exists out there um, for most people this is gonna be enough and even a very very simple scanner uh, for a hundred bucks will get you a range of communications that's really interesting out there so uh, that's basically the differences between both receivers and uh, why would you buy a communications receiver or a scanner uh, that depends on your radio listening hope it explains a little bit what these are and that it helped you knowing what you might want to have as a receiver and um, I hope that you enjoyed my new channel with all its VHF UHF um, videos so thanks for watching 73s